every so often when searching the California coast for great white sharks, I find other species doing amazing things. Here's one of those times. These are yellowtail barracuda, and this is the largest school I've ever seen. Although they are mainly solitary when adults, schooling together as juveniles creates protection from predators. Predators that include sharks. While these fish are widespread across the globe, and can even be kept in large aquariums, they are considered predators of the sea. They do have sharp teeth, but there is little evidence available regarding attacks on humans. It is known that they are attracted to metallic and shiny objects, so swimmers must take care while around schools of these juvenile fish. Southern California is home to a variety of fish, the beauty of this place is only surpassed by the importance of each species' roles in the system. Scenes like this of a large aggregation of leopard sharks can signal a healthy system. Leopard sharks spawn in shallow waters. Their young can be seen in big numbers across a variety of beaches in California. They take upwards of 15 years to reach sexual maturity, and one female can birth up to 36 pups in a given year. Because they prefer shallow muddy waters near shore, they are susceptible to the damages of big rain events that can push toxic plumes of pathogens out into the water. Part of observing sharks includes observing injuries. Do you see the gash on this white shark's head? When I first filmed this, I wasn't sure what to make of this injury. What could it be? I sent the footage to a handful of marine biologists. While it's impossible to say definitively what caused this injury, it can be looked at from a possibilities viewpoint. Is this an injury from another shark? That is possible, but other causes may actually be more likely given the unique appearance of this injury. This injury is very unique in that it doesn't have the appearance of an actual bite. From the left side, you can clearly see the injury has the appearance of being pried open or struck by a foreign object. Another possibility is that this could be a boat strike. With an increase in the amount of boats giving chase to sharks, it's very possible this could be a boat strike. Just a couple meters to the right, and this shark gets struck. Contrary to popular belief, Sharks just don't always move out of the way of a speeding boat, especially juveniles, and especially from boats traveling fast. There is a high possibility this injury could in fact be a boat strike. These are juveniles after all. It does bring to light the importance of navigating a shark nursery with more care. But there is another possible explanation, one that came to me from a very unlikely source. It came from a few fishermen who originally contacted me via Instagram. I can't show the photos that were referenced to me due to copyright reasons, but after reviewing the images, this injury has a high possibility of actually being a gunshot wound. In fact, some of the images of gunshots on sharks are so similar, I'm led to believe this may explain the scar. There is one thing certain, this shark should be fine. Great white sharks are incredible healers, and I fully expect to see this shark again someday. There is irony in how many shark injuries I see from above along the California coast, and just how near humans they can be without a resulting human injury. Here's a swimmer near a shark. He had no idea was there. When he exited the water, I tracked him down to ask if he saw the shark. Not surprisingly, he did not. Like most water goers here, he seemed fine to accept the risk, and it did not deter him from re-entering the water. One has to wonder if footage like this is making folks too comfortable around sharks. The reality is, shark bites are extremely rare, but it is wise to remember these are wild animals after all. But not all water goers are so comfortable. Notice this man's reaction as soon as he realizes he's in the presence of a great white shark. Here, you clearly see him wave to the children in the water to get out. The fact of the matter is, great white sharks are in their home, and when humans enter their domain, just like any other wild animal, some level of risk is being taken. When I first started this channel, 
I didn't do it to scare people from entering the water. I did it to show more realistically the nature of these animals in Southern California. With millions of people entering the waters of California yearly, attacks are exceptionally rare, no matter what anyone says. The footage doesn't lie. Humans are not the food of choice for sharks, but that does not mean a wild animal won't bite. Unfortunately, with millions of humans entering the water yearly, so do the remnants of human activity. This is a mylar balloon floating near a juvenile white shark. Ask anyone who spends time on the ocean and they will tell you, mylar balloons are far too plentiful. Most recently, discarded masks have been finding their way into the ocean, much to the amusement of some sharks. One has to wonder how many masks have been ingested by sea life Whether it's boats washing up on shore or various debris floating on the ocean, you can be certain a shark has taken interest. I see it all the time, especially among juveniles still learning about the environment around them. Even a Pepsi carton floating at sea is enough to amuse a juvenile white shark. What these images say about humans is probably more telling than what behaviors the sharks display but they are images that are vital for us to see. Every day, sea life contends with human activity. Here's another example. This is a great white shark entangled in fishing gear. Its injuries are apparent, as is the leader line it is towing. The images speak for themselves. Again, sharks are resilient, and this should be fine once the hook dissolves. Here's another shark. Do you see the gash on its fin? Severely damaged fins are common among white sharks, whether from humans or from natural activity. It is something I see often, but an exceptionally large amount is caused by the practice of long line fishing. Notice the bent fin on this shark. It's eerily similar to Arrow's injury, a shark I've not seen in over a year. As I continue to search for it, I remember that these injuries are a humble reminder of my role in nature. Not everything I film is a direct result of humans. Here's a couple clips of sharks that have likely just finished a meal. Remember, these are wild animals, after all. I greatly appreciate your support on this channel and I look forward to bringing you more information featuring shark experts and scientists. I encourage you to read the citations in the video description below to learn more about the shark topics discussed. If you'd like to learn more about how to get involved in protecting our sea life, please visit the links of the organizations listed in the video description below.